Vista House. Gearwebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is free patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at Gearwebsites.com. at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with Music and the Truth Until Dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> And welcome, everybody, to our Daily Gun Show. We come to you live every weeknight at midnight Eastern, and we talk about guns for an hour or so. Sometimes it's longer. Yesterday it was four hours, I guess. Does that mean we only talk for a couple hours the rest of the week and call it a week? No. We'll just go ahead and do another show as if a four-hour show didn't even happen yesterday. So every day of the week, we talk about a different topic. Because we have a goal with this show, and that's to share our community and share the history of that community, share the direction and the growth and the evolution of our community. And that takes a lot of different directions. We put an emphasis on what the Second Amendment protects, but uh, the goal is to get a lot of different uh, or leave structure in place so that we can get a lot of different things accomplished with a show that goes live every single weeknight. So on Tuesdays, we talk about the Second Amendment. And normally, you see a license plate as the thumbnail because each week we take a look at a different state. We've done a run of that for a while now, and I figured we'd take a break from that for a week here to we're doing California next week. But a break here so that we can talk about, kind of take a, a rest and look back at where we've been, and that's what we're going to do tonight. So thanks for showing up. Uh, to the show either live or listening to this in the future and uh, we're going to kind of take a look back and forward as I figure out how to open up what I'm trying to do and talk at the same time why it's not difficult to type and talk always okay so now we're opening up the channel over here I'm not really screen sharing I'm just going to open up the well I guess I could screen share I'm just opening up the playlist here there's nothing really to look at. I'm going to use the play. Oops. I'm going to use the playlist as a guide, and I'm hopefully going to be interacting with the live audience tonight. So, each night when we go live, we keep about a third to a quarter of the screen over here. The part that I'm wiggling right now is the uh, live conversation. So, uh, feel free to be part of the conversation. The topic tonight for our two-way topic is. 2A in the USA in 2022. Sure, we're not in the most 2A year we could ever be. That'll be 200 years from now. But we're in a pretty 2A year. Look at how many twos are in this year. 2022. So many twos. So this we should really be getting a lot accomplished this year. We're going to go back and look at the states. And maybe there's a way to add an element to this uh, going forward where this Tuesday uh, effort, this portion of the project, can do more than just focus on each state. Um, and that could be with adding the headlines for the last week to each one. I kind of do that on Friday, so it would be duplicating effort, but not everybody's doing everything, you know, looking at everything, I guess. But the idea would be that... Uh, this is season two of the Daily Gun Show. The first 1,200 episodes or something like that were the uh, season one, I guess. And took a break there and went back, came back to season two and did the license plate thing again. However, I also have another playlist over here on the Daily Gun Show channel for just the plain old license plates because 
I did a lot of channel shows back in the day where we used a license plate. Uh, that didn't work. So we're going to uh, look at that playlist, view full playlist. There we go. Does it tell you? Yeah, there's 30 videos in this one. And these are all kind of pre-1200. So these would be from 2019 and 18 and earlier. We probably just went in and talked about the states with not much structure for a while there. One of the co-hosts was going to like, I remember he was going to Wikipedia or something. He was going to some website, I think, that had some of the data. And then we would go through that data and that became a little bit of a structure. So when I came back to doing season two of the podcast, um, uh, I took that structure and definitely used that for Tuesdays. So now when we look at Tuesdays, that's all we do is really look at each state and we go through a project that was created in 2020, the 50 states of 2A book, and go through and um, use that book as a guide to talk about what's going on in each state. Uh, the book was made in 2020 and guess what? Things have happened since then. So there are, have been things that are, there are things that we've discovered through the weeks, I guess, many weeks now, months, uh, that have been outdated in the book. So it could be used, it could use some sprucing up or some updating, but that's what these shows end up doing is giving us a chance to figure that out see what's missing and what's new. Then I guess next year, what'll happen since there's about 50 weeks and luckily we also have 50 states that gives us a pretty decent cycle there. These have been random, uh, random based off of the voting of the people in the live audience. We use the poll feature of YouTube and let folks vote for which, uh, which state they'd like to do next week. And that determines the next week state. Uh, we just, I think I just take uh, suggestions from people watching live and that's where we add the new state each week. So let's take a look back here. We've taken a look at, I guess we've had 20 weeks of this in this season two era or version of the daily gun show we did uh, iowa I ohio georgia then i think these are in order indiana then tennessee nebraska minnesota arkansas new hampshire new jersey alabama massachusetts arizona idaho north dakota and south dakota florida pennsylvania and next week will be california and that's still only about half of the states, not even. So uh, we've got a bunch more to do. Um, I think what I'll also do is grab the uh, 50 states, uh, one of the good ones, a printed one that's in good shape. I usually use kind of a bad one to do the show. Uh, and then that way we can take a look at what it's got going on. Uh, not too many people. A couple of people showed up to say, hey, Cancer Mouse and Smoke and then Vanessa Kitty. Otherwise, uh, I don't know if anybody's showing up tonight to chat live. Uh, in which case, this will go a little bit quicker because I don't really, well, sometimes I can blab, but I tend to blab more when there's somebody out there to chat with. So I will think I'll put on a commercial here and go grab one of the 50 states of 2A out of the shelf over here. And we'll get into just taking a look at the, the states that we've already looked at this year or this season, I guess, so far. So one of the things we do on Saturdays is go live with Tony Simon and Clover, Clover Tech and uh, we talk about, well, we answer people's questions that they ask over at our website, askgunquestions.com. Askgunquestions.com is a website that we built back in 2007. And since then, for the last 15 years, people have been able to ask questions of simple to advanced nature, and we attempt to answer them in different ways over the years. Join us now as we start a new series to answer gun questions. Thanks to Mark, I think, bought a couple of books and that got me, because I was out of books, that got me to uh, set up everything and get the printer going and I printed out a couple more, I think, of everything in the inventory. Nothing's, I don't think everything's been sold yet. So let's see, if I bring this over here, this should work. We'll quit screen sharing. Thank you, Sharon. And we'll put 
this back on. There we go. All right, so uh, this is the 50 States of 2A, published in 2020. Uh, the back cover was an attempt to visualize the states that had CCW, states that had open carry, states with constitutional carry, states that have uh, decriminalized or uh, removed restrictions on hunting with a suppressor. And then there was at the time nine states that had a state firearm, just like you'd have a state bird or a state tree or something. Uh, some of the states had a state firearm. So the idea was to have a little oval in there for each of these things. And I didn't, that's a bad graphic, but that's what happens when you can't hire people who do graphics for a living. So I uh, had some information on the back. The idea was to offer some information on the back here about what's inside, uh, put the goal on the side, our branding and logos or whatever, and then uh, leave some space here if a gun shop was given this way or selling it or something to put their business card or a stamp or something. The front is pretty simple, 50 states of two way. And as we dig into it, we've got uh, the front cover is a graphic we did to attempt to show the size and scale maybe of our community, uh, the advocates in our community. Starts out with Harriet Tubman and goes all the way up to some of the newest advocates uh, as of 2020 when I did this. And uh, one of the things that we've done for other projects is to do cartoons of everybody. So this is just a whole bunch of cartoons of all the different uh, advocates. And there's a state behind them with a different color indicating what kind of advocacy they're doing, what they're up to. And then uh, chronologically from the olden days up until today. So uh, then we've got the 50 states, of course. Each state gets a page. And there's a second column here for some of the other things. Some, I always talk about this, but some of the states just have less stuff to talk about. So on, for example, the state Montana has less stuff to talk about. It only takes up about half the page. So the other half of the page is famous females with firearms and just kind of put, obviously not every one of them, but there's some interesting ladies out there. Um, we'll talk about that as we dig into it. So there's quite a few of those extras or add-ons. Again, some branding and I'm trying to make it look like a book. I don't know what I'm doing. And then we dig right in. I didn't waste a bunch of time with nothing. It just gets straight into Alabama. And let's see, I think we have, I'm pretty sure we've done Alabama before. Talladega range, I did a cartoon of that while back. So put that on the page, got Beth, a bunch of organizations and industry uh, companies and things like that. This is one of the states with a state rifle or a state gun. So we put the state gun in there. Some competition shooters. Pat Spurgeon was the uh, first lady in history to get a medal in the Olympics. Excuse me, the first one to get a gold medal in the Olympics. So there's another lady that's in here that'll be the first one to get a medal. So uh, this one, again, Alaska, you would think they'd have more stuff. They didn't have that much stuff. So the bottom of the Alaska page, you've got some podcasters, uh, riding shotgun with Charlie at the time, Liberty Doll. Morning Coffee with Craig was active when I put this together. Then he went off air for like a year or something. Now he's active again. Pro Arms Podcast. I'm kind of fudging with that one, but it's Masada Yub. Come on. I want to give credit to a, an awesome podcast that inspired and educated a lot of people. we got the Plate Society podcast and its different versions. At the time, it was these three guys doing it. They brought in more people since then. One of the podcasts I emulate my stuff off of was the Out of Order podcast with James Kalita. So uh, it's not around anymore, but it was an awesome podcast. You can probably still find them out on YouTube. They're usually in 20 minutes to 40 minutes. He just said, here I am with XYZ and drops, shuts up and lets the person talk. And, and that creates a scenario where the person has to say something. So they just keep talking and it's usually kind of begins with what they're there for or what they expect to be there for. And then they just start talking. So you really get to know the activists in this. And because they're talking to each other, they know they're talking to other activists. It's a really interesting podcast interview show to listen to. Got locked and loaded in here. Got Tony's uh, podcast, even though he does a couple of them. I like the 2A4E one the best. Of course, Riding Shotgun with Charlie. And got the crump down there. 
Arizona, of course, is such an awesome state. We take the entire page, a couple of museums, a whole bunch of activists, inventors, uh, people in industry, in, uh, instructors, uh, Bill Wooden from ammunition side of things. We've got school, like every, everything's in Arizona, every single thing. We have a state firearm, of course. We have constitutional carry, second state to get constitutional carry, to demand and get constitutional carry. So Arizona is, of course, featured in here. Uh, Arkansas, uh, most of Arkansas or Arkansas took some stuff. They got the Sanders Museum, which is Saunders Museum, which is pretty neat. I've stood there. This is from one of my pictures, I believe, but uh, it was closed. We were there so early in the morning and I definitely want to get back to see this one. So these are two museums. I have stood in front of this one, never been in it. Can't wait to get in there and definitely want to get to this one. If you want a sneak preview, there's a three hour video, a three hour video of walking through the Daisy Museum, and it is worth every minute of the three hours. It is super fun to watch that. Well, it's super nerdy, but it's interesting to watch that one. Next, we got a chunk of the page under Alaska or under Arkansas here for radio shows. Of course, we got uh, Dan Cheryl Todd. I changed it up. Actually, one of the only change in it since the first printing is I added Dan a while back for the, like the second version of this, and then I changed Cheryl's to green. So they're both wearing the AZ Firearms colors now. Uh, the new one will also have uh, Rob in here, but in this version, it had Cheryl and Dan. It had uh, Amanda from Eye on the Target Radio. It had uh, Mike from Come and Talk It. Of course, our friend Charles Heller here in Tucson with Liberty Watch Radio. And I had this guy because I'd heard of him before, but I didn't listen to too many other radio shows. So I did, that's all I had for radio shows in here at the time. California, another state with lots of stuff. I've done a lot of cartoons of the various museums, so got the uh, LA P Police Museum in there. Uh, Colorado, again, the state with a lot of stuff, good and bad, definitely some bad. Connecticut, a lot of history, so a lot of inventors and stuff. Back when I did the project, the car, the project with the uh, old blast guns and with the uh, firearms inventors, uh, ended up doing a lot of research on these old guns. I'm around them all the time, or I used to be around them all the time out here in Arizona, hanging out at gun shops, the gun shop I hung out at all the time. Bob really liked old guns, so we had a lot of them, and I was around a lot of them, but I didn't really absorb too much. Uh, but it was, pro it was a fun project to learn about them for at least some amount of time uh, while it was still in my head. We got the gunsmith schools underneath Delaware, because the only thing I know about Delaware is they got Kim Petters who is one of my favorites of all Second Amendment advocates out there. Uh, she did an amazing role in her job for the military uh, with the global war on terror. And because of that, she has you know, her own stuff that she's going through. And she found eventually that marijuana is something that helps her with that. And now she's an advocate for rights of people who want to uh, use marijuana as medically or maybe recreationally. and have retained their rights and there's no one else doing it. And she's also, of course, the DC project, well, maybe not of course, but she's also the DC project delegate. One of the things I did in the book is put a little DC project thing next to any ladies that might be in here that uh, are part of it. It's not in, I don't have all the ladies in here, but the ones that are, are mentioned. Uh, then there's gunsmith schools. The rest of this page with Delaware is all gunsmith schools. And that was a fun project to go through and research those, put them in here chronologically. Uh, it's the first one started in 1945. It makes sense right after the war and everything. People started to come home with all those things and all those war guns and wanted to uh, customize them or modify them or fix them or do things with the uh, parts. Uh, and all the way up until the last one started in 2020 in Arkansas. Uh, one started in 2000, so they span, you know, the entire history of modern gun stuff. Florida, tons of stuff happens in Florida, so not too much to add there. Georgia, another state with a ton of stuff going on. General format is to have the same data about all the states at the top, uh, the state shape with their flag kind of embossed in there so that there's some consistency there. Then the uh, date that they were admitted into the union, as well as the order that they were admitted, just for reference, I guess, for nothing or another reason. If the state, all but nine of the states have, a, well, they all have constitutions, I think, but all but nine have a state, a portion of the state constitution, which you consider a second amendment. 
some declaration of the individual right to possess and use firearms. So that's the first thing that's written on each of the pages whenever the state has one. And it's interesting as you go through some of them are paragraphs, some of them are a sentence, and then there's like nine states out of 50 that don't have one at all, that don't offer any kind of state um, protection or restriction from the state infringing. Uh, whenever it is in there, try to cite you know the paragraph and article and that kind of thing. Then you have just the standard stuff that's consistent on all of them. If they're open carry, if so, when, and if there's any you know, caveats, this isn't supposed to be like, I'm gonna carry this guide around with me. This is supposed to be for people who wanna be advocates and just have this information at their fingertips. It's alphabetical, you just go in here and find the state, and then just a comparison type of thing. So the open carry and the concealed carry, again, it would be like when it happened, some of the states went may issue and then went to shall issue. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but we might find one just by kind of coming through here. But you can see like open carry has a stipulation of with a permit. No, I put without a permit. So I guess I could have left that because that's not really a stern regulation. But in New Jersey, you can open carry with a permit. They have may issue. Obviously, that's changed now to shall issue. But uh, like that, the may issue didn't come around until, see, I don't know when it came around, but uh, the states that I did know, like uh, Nevada, they got their shell issue in 1995. So there's that kind of stuff again, just so you can do some kind of quick comparisons. If you're having a conversation, one of the things that's been bugging me over the years of doing conversations or being part of conversations online, in real life, at rallies, at gun shows and gun shops and stuff, is just not having accurate, quick data. And it doesn't, I mean, accurate is one thing, but researched, you know, useful data. So if it's in the ballpark, it's good enough. And if you can use it to compare and to get an idea of what's happened, and that's what it's all about. So there's going to be some discrepancies here. I'm only myself doing this. So uh, there might be some errors, but the idea is to offer some consistency up here so that you can start to get an idea of how the states kind of spread the spectrum on these different aspects. So additionally, constitutional carry, this thing's definitely out of date because it's from 2020. I think we had probably I guess we'll find out if we find the, uh, if we go through each of these things, one of them will be con constitutional carry. I think it might've been like 19 states when, when I wrote this, I'm not sure. Then we've got uh, suppressors for hunting. That's a, a major initiative by the American Suppressor Association. They had something called the Hearing Protection Act, which through the American Disabilities Act suggested that re restricting suppressors was restricting a safety device, a hearing safety device. So removing suppressors for hunting is done from the let's be polite aspect as well as the let's keep our hunters from experiencing hearing loss to seeing Anne when they're hunting. So the suppressors for hunting is a pretty awesome kind of modern initiative uh, that's really easy to track because they've documented their stuff and they've done such a good job of it and it's all happened very recently. Well, I shouldn't say very recently, since 2012. So very recently compared to the Second Amendment. Uh, state firearms, like I mentioned, only nine states, I guess 10 states. I, since this was published, Texas added a state firearm. But I think the state firearms are neat just because uh, it's a, it's another win when you can get one. And it's uh, an accomplishment to get people together for that win, right? So anything we can use as training wheels or a, a practice session, is worth it and most of the states don't yet have a state firearm so it's cool to see those states that have them other than that though the layout of the page uh, is the organizations and uh, uh, usually organizations down this side uh, and then sometimes like a, a place or a sport I guess that's what I was looking for and then the museums typically down at the bottom because I've drawn cartoons of pretty much all the museums that are out there uh, I wanted to include those because I want to include the museums. And if I've got to put something visual on the page, um, my cartoons of people aren't that great. I don't know how to add color and do stuff right. Uh, but uh, this it looks cooler. And again, I'm, I'm interested in letting people know where these museums are so that that's common knowledge. Well, I'll be a better off knowing the history of firearms and that these museums are out there uh, as part of our infrastructure gives us something to go to when we're traveling, gives us a destination, an additional destination, and it gives us a place to uh, remember what's, what's going on and whatnot. So uh, anyway, so that's one of the reasons I added those. And then uh, again, inventors, act activists, 
and that's pretty much the only cartoons I've got in there. All right, so then uh, that's about each page's general layout. Uh, I don't know if I need to go through each one of the, like, I don't know what to call these, like, special blurbs here. But this one, for example, is Olympic shooting, and I'm no expert, but I did some basic research and, and have some of the major events that happen through Olympic shooting. A lot of this research was that I'm just doing research on this, and part of the research talked about Olympic shooting, so it was in there. And then at some point I'm doing research over here and it included Olympic shooting. So now I have Olympic shooting in two different places that I've been doing research on. So I just said, well, why don't I don't just put another place here and put all this stuff about Olympic shooting here together. So it's not like I deliberately research some of this stuff. It's like a, a filtered set of multiple projects and it just started to come together. And I needed something to fill these and I wanted to keep it similar to an almanac or again, a way to keep a lot of information together. So like, uh, there's another maiden for that, but uh, this one is firearms museums. I'm a big fan of those museums, as I mentioned. So these I ranked uh, out by date that they were created and then I have information like the number of guns and where they are. So uh, that one's interesting. In fact, some of the largest collections that we have in the country that are public collections are not admissible to the public because the FBI and the ATF possess them, you know, for crimes and, and prototype guns. Uh, indoor shooting ranges, given uh, another insight to the community as far as where we're able to shoot inside. I'm sure one of these is outdoor um, ranges. This one, I guess, is a little adjacent, but, you know, I put army museums in here. It's written really small. I probably could be talked out of leaving it in here, but I like museums and I wanted to put it in there. Uh, there's probably other stuff I could have put in here. If I was redoing this, I'd probably put some maps. That's a lot of real estate for something that, that not that many people are going to be interested in, but there are so many army museums. The cool thing about one of the cool things about the army is that we put a museum in every fort pretty much. So everywhere that we've got a fort, we put a room somewhere or it's buildings. So usually there's enough room for a whole building. And we just throw all the old stuff in there and you put somebody in there who's in charge of making sure it doesn't burn down. And now you got a museum. And then at some point, they put more money into making sure there's glass and everything's fancy and they write stuff there so people know what they're looking at. But they've just kept this stuff. It's not like anybody went to any extra trouble. It's just the, the Army didn't throw stuff away for a long time. And each of these forts and posts and stuff have them. Uh, so I just thought that was neat. And so I put that in there. This one down here is the people that made this possible. This this was an accumulation of stuff from the website, but it took time to put it together. I was still learning. I'm, I am still learning how to put together these books and the software and all that. So one of the things, if you take a look on the inside of each of these pages, there's some really tiny writing kind of horizontally here, or vertically, I guess, where it says uh, this state sponsored by, and then it talks about who sponsored the state. So we did a crowdfunding project. I tried to do those on the regular because they are super powerful ways to enable projects to happen without needing a Bloomberg. We don't need some organization to deem things like, oh, this is necessary and valid, so we've given you a grant. Sometimes it's just a matter of this should happen, this should exist, and this number of people made it happen, made this book happen. So I don't know how many people it is. Did I number it? I guess I didn't, but what is that? It can't be two dozen people chipped in, threw a couple of bucks at me. Maybe it was lunch. Maybe it was a cup of coffee. Maybe it was uh, 50 bucks. I don't know. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But a bunch of people threw in money. That gave me the time and the ability to, to put this all together. I'm sure I sent them a copy or two and then, again, gave them credit on each page for making it happen. This next one is hunting organizations. Everybody likes to have some kind of jollies about getting mad at FUDs. FUDs are people who made firearms ownership possible by defending the ability to hunt, uh, create uh, wildlife resources, or I should say uh, wildlife um, habitats, and then uh, did that in such a way that people laid off a gun ownership until Chan Chan came around, really, or I guess the Brady's. So until the very recent attacks on gun ownership, hunters bore the, the burden of keeping the Second Amendment around successfully for a long time. The consequences, the results of that, I think, if I'm understanding it correctly, 
are these organizations that, again, maintain habitat, they raise funds, they retain awareness, uh, they keep hunters aware and uh, focused on you know, the, being ethical and being conservationists. And often, uh, you know, you, take, you can look, you can find examples of hunters being a lot more uh, clean and friendly to the environment than other uh, groups that champion such things that don't actually do it. So I wanted to put them in there and these also champion some of the critters because most of the hunting organizations are focused on a particular type of critter and critters are pretty cool. So they get some mention in there. We got those constitutional carry states and I guess I got down to 16. So this is definitely an old list. We know that it's up to 25 now and it'll soon be higher than that. I also included the Air Force Museums, which is definitely barely adjacent. Army museums almost always have guns. The guns that were used on the fort or the post are going to be in there. It's like I say, they just just a storeroom. They just didn't throw some stuff away. Air Force Museums do the same thing, but their guns are way bigger and they have airplanes attached to them. So there's very few guns in Air Force Museums other than the big ones stuck to airplanes, but they're still awesome. So the Air Force Museums are fewer of them but they are pretty neat. And I don't think this is an inclusive list, but there are definitely fewer of them. They cost too much to make you know, a big area for our airplane museum. Uh, let's see. So then this is the NRA uh, meetings. The NRA meetings, you know, they are what they are. Uh, they definitely have been perceived as a big portion of our community. Whether or not they are or not is another thing. So what I, intend, what I tried to do here was uh, show the, it's a, what's the name, what do they call it? It's like a transient nature of it. Houston, Nashville, Indiana, Dallas, Atlanta, Louisville, Louisville, Nashville, uh, Indiana, Houston, St. Louis, right? Like they're all over the place. Like they're not like in some little tiny circle. Like they're, they're kind of, well, they're not really in Florida or California, but you know, they're staying, they're bouncing around. Now, if you take another look uh, for the ones that I have numbers for, 80,000 in 2019, 80,000 in 2016, 86,000 in 2013, 73,000 in 2012. So think about that. 2012, everybody's chill. If we ever did some sort of a book like this, taking all this information chronologically, which I've attempted, it's half made, it's just really shitty. Um, when you look at it that way, you can see some of the cycles and waves. This is spatially, right? Each state is a page. These little chunks here are little timelines. But 2012, the only thing we really had going on then was some ammo shortages some issues with AR-15s and whether or not the modularity and there was some other things in the run-in for that, whether or not we were going to span off into a different rifle platform to be a truly modular platform. There was like different debates going on back then. 73,000 people show up at the NRA show. Let's take a look at the year before. 71,000 a couple of years late, earlier, 70,000. A couple of years later, 66,000. So when I was attending the NRA shows, it was in this 66 to 71,000. So that's what I've experienced. Depending on the venue, you know, it's, it's going to feel more crowded or not. But 73,000 is not a huge growth, but it is growth. 86,000, I don't know what the percentage is there, like 20% growth or something, 10% growth. Like that's a lot of growth. And then it drops immediately back to 75. That's indicative of some some bigger stuff that's going on. So this stuff is in here, but it's there so that you can have a conversation about it. And everybody's got the data. Like I say, it might be off a little bit, but I probably went to the NRA website and pulled all this where I could find it. A lot of times I'll find an article uh, and it'll mention something. So I'll jump over to the Minuteman website and include that little factoid. This is an accumulation of those factoids. So this isn't necessarily like one article that described the attendances, but I might Every time I find an attendance or hear somebody mention an official attendance of a meeting like that, that's what Minuteman University is for to, to accumulate that kind of stuff. Uh, then let's see, we got a couple of more states and then we've got this one with the number of CCW permits by state. Again, to offer some perspective and some insight, you've got states like Hawaii where they just mock the whole concept. 
District of Columbia, New Jersey, of course, you know, at the ridicule of the states that have the, sh the most struggle. But then you get Florida, Pennsylvania. Do people really think Pennsylvania has a factor of more CCW permits than Ohio by like twice as many as Ohio? I guess that kind of makes sense. But when you think of like North Carolina and Pennsylvania, I wouldn't think Pennsylvania is twice as many as North Carolina. So I just think that's again can create some interesting conversations, but hopefully seeing this stuff gets it in, you know, absorbed and then it's in conversation. So now somebody mentioned it or mentioned it. And then in another real life conversation, somebody can say, what are you talking about? Don't you know that in Florida, 1,700,000 people have CCW permits? And you know that like most of those people don't live in Florida. Most of those people live around the country. So this idea that only certain people have, you know, you can have real conversations once you are, like understand some of this stuff or just have this at your fingertips. Suppressors for hunting. I kind of mentioned the American Suppressor Association, this little fanboy page to them. Each of the states that they've been, uh, you know, have uh, been affiliated with or, you know, been, you know, I'm not going to say they did it. People in the states did it, but the states that they've encouraged to do so uh, is a for growing list. It's awesome. All these manufacturers join the ASA. So it's neat to see a piece of industry that's useful, right? Suppressors are super cool. And imagine how well that stuff will start to develop once the NFA is gone. This is the kind of stuff that takes giant bites out of the NFA. The NFA has to justify why a hearing protection device that makes your gun a foot longer and stays hot for half an hour so it's almost useless in crime, why that would be prohibited. So they did amazing strides and then all of a sudden the thing happened and everybody lost track of it and let it go. This was written in 2020 and it was meant to be a 2020 version that it, ideally, you know, once I get a staff of interns and a couple of sugar mamas foot in the bills, we'll have uh, this thing up to date with rallies each year as this thing gets published each year. But look at how it was going to go down in 2020. Unfortunately, these didn't all happen. And this probably isn't all of them. But when I published this, probably at the end of 2019, we had just had the DC rally in 19. So they had planned on having another DC rally in October. Didn't ever happen, but they'd planned on it. I can't even read these. But this is uh, New York. Hold the line was Georgia. Florida, Illinois, uh, Washington, Iowa, stick to your guns, I think it was West Virginia. This one is uh, Oklahoma. Uh, secure your state. Oh, I want to say, I can't remember. Uh, another New York one. New Mexico. I did get to that one. The Arizona one, of course, I got to. This one was Virginia, maybe. There's West Virginia's, Pennsylvania's. No, there's the Virginia one, another one in Iowa. And man, it's hard to read when they're that little. If I had it printed nicely, it might come out better. But uh, that was the amount of rallies that I was just aware of when I printed this thing. And Uh, then I have some stuff for accessible shooting on the back here. Most accessible things have to do with uh, taking uh, wounded and uh, people that are missing limbs and stuff uh, out hunting, but uh, not everything. Some of these are just to get people accessible. So some of them are, uh, well, the one called... Uh, Action track chair is just a place making chairs. And then the other one is, uh, oh, I don't even have the other one in here. So maybe I did limit this one to just ones that are shooting. So there's some others that I could include that are just more like getting people uh, rests and mod modifications to their chairs uh, to give them rests and that kind of stuff. Then lastly, the last page here basically is the... Uh, State firearms I keep talking about, there's 10 of them. Uh, I have eight of them, or there's nine of them. I have eight of them here. And then a couple of national level 
Second Amendment projects. And I did use the last two pages here to mention our gun show loophole tour, where we've gone around over the last years, uh, driving around, checking out gun shops, going to museums and checking out shooting ranges and uh, gun shows all over the place and you know creating that uh, awareness of the community and uh, hopefully supporting people out there that are decent at the Minuteman project Minuteman University which is the project that, where this thing is from everything in here is from Minuteman University it's just the website version of everything every second matters is the project that uh, we're attempting to keep alive where everybody gets together on the second of the month to explore or to uh, create awareness of what our second amendment so I've got a mosquito about to eat my face. Uh, awareness of what our Second Amendment protects. This is the Daily Gun Show, believe it or not. Look at that. And then uh, a couple of other books that we've mailed. The uh, Firearms Museum. We'll do that one maybe some Thursday. And the Almanac. I've had to put that one down because I can only do so much. And that one takes a heck of a lot of work. That one's my passion. But uh, I don't get to choose what people are interested in. I attempted doing a... Uh, yeah, crowdfunding for that one, but it just didn't work out. It, it was at the same time as the 2019 rally, and the amount of work it would take to put this one together takes a good number of months, and I'm just not going to be able to do it. And then lastly, we do have some uh, playing cards that we've created. They're printed in Texas, and uh, we've made them live in projects like this, going live and using the software. We didn't do all the research live, but we took the accumulated research and laid it out on the cards. I tried to show people the process of the graphic stuff and the kind of the layout and all that kind of stuff shared and let people contribute to it. And then uh, did that as a crowdfunding thing. So that's in a nutshell, however long this took, 40 minute nutshell of the uh, the 50 states of 2A. And that's what we use each week. Uh, I'm not going to use this one because this is what we sell over at our gear website store. So if you want this specific one, you could probably buy it off of me. What we use is this other one that I printed a long time ago poorly. So every other page is printed wrong and I'm not gonna be able to sell that. So uh, this is the one I just keep using each week. Eventually though, I will have time or at some point I have to go in and update this. Like things like the constitutional carry list being at 16 is pretty bad. <laughs> so this has some stuff that needs to be updated and uh, Whenever that happens, I'll print out another copy and then use that one for this show. Until then, that's the 50 states of 2A. Since I was over there grabbing it, and since we're still live here, I figured I'd show off this little guy. Uh, whenever people purchase stuff, usually for the first time, or if you request one, this is our little buyer's guide. So stuff, I just think maybe it's because of the lighting. Uh, maybe that's better. So uh, yeah, after we're all done, I figured out how to get the lighting a little bit better maybe. So uh, we do a lot of different things over at the store. So this is a, a way to have a buyer's guide for that stuff. I guess that's technically a table of contents. And then we've got the playing cards. Our first one was an AK-47 deck with the uh, silhouettes of AK-47s. We had the cartridges that they shot behind them along with their bayonets and a bunch of data about the country of origin and the factories and the materials used in them. A lot of fun. And uh, we got a lot of feedback that people wanted them to be in color instead of silhouettes like an aircraft identification deck. So our second deck a couple of year later, a couple of years later, uh, was the fire uh, Old West guns. So we have one suit that's revolvers, one of them that's shotguns, one of them that's uh, weird stuff like Derringers and that, and then another one that's rifles. And that was a lot of fun. We know people down in to Tombstone that own museums and shops and stuff down there. So we spent a lot of time down in Tombstone taking all the pictures for these, put them together in a similar format, only with color pictures that time. It was a little bit too, I don't know, it was okay, but it seemed a little bit boring. So the next deck we did is the Gun Inventors, and that's where I started doing the cartoons. I wanted to have consistent heads or faces for each of these inventors. So since there's no way to do that, you know, somebody who's brand new versus somebody back in the day, are going to have different images of them so i just started making these cartoons so that we could make this deck did a bunch of research for this had a lot of fun this was in the middle of the gun channels and everything so this was a, a very collaborative project people and speak bringing people together and 
uh, hopefully empowering people with skills and stuff. A lot of people book out of here as soon as they figure out, oh, wow, this is neat. I'm going to go pursue it in this direction. Uh, then we started doing some posters. So that's the end of the playing cards. Eventually, we'll start doing another deck of cards. The first deck was made in Kentucky uh, from Bicycle. And then I found out that that's super expensive, or at least it's unnecessarily expensive because that's an actual Bicycle playing card deck. This deck is made in Texas. So... I don't know if you can tell the difference technically, but it's made in Texas versus made in, uh, I think, Kentucky. And uh, these are also made in Texas. Then we do our posters. Most of these are made over in California. And we've done a couple of different ones. It's really hard to see on here, but you can uh, use this as a buyer's guide or a collector's guide and check off the ones that you've got. Uh, we've also done some card decks that are printed and uncut. And there's a couple of those left for anybody that basically just wants to invest in an interesting picture. Some people have liked them. We had a gun shop or two that bought these things when we had them and uh, put them out in the shop and people would buy them. We've got a couple of books like the one we just talked about, The 50 States of 2A. We've also got the Shooter's Almanac, as I mentioned. I'd like to continue to do that at some point. We've got a one that's a smaller booklet that talks about the museums. And then uh, it's another smaller booklet that talks about the mini revolvers. These were all projects from uh, 2000 and 2001 as I was learning how to do the publishing. And I don't remember when I bought the fancy printer, but we got the fancy printer. I mean, it prints out like this. I don't know if it's super fancy, but uh, it allows us to build these things here in Tucson. So uh, we're not uh, outsourced or nothing. The middle here is our uh, patch, kind of a history of our patches. So this was our booklets and stuff. And then, you know, we're known for patches. I'm a big fan of patches, being a scout, and being in Civil Air Patrol, which is effectively hanging out with the Air Force all the time. I Army, mean, we never had patches. I mean, we had patches, but we didn't have no Velcro or nothing. So nobody traded patches in the Army back when I was in the Army. But back in uh, other things, you know, fishing, hunting, camping, and stuff like that, sometimes people there would uh, collect patches. And then shooting, like a lot of shooting competitions, you can get a patch. So patches have just always been sort of a thing in our culture and community. And when the internet started to become a thing back in the day, these morale patches started to come up. So as I started to see more and more people doing interesting things that were their, their own, I said, there's got to be a way to get into this. Like you, you shouldn't have to do this. It's not magical. You just have to figure out how, to, how many to buy and then buy them and try to sell them or something to not go broke. So our first one, uh, first attempt ever was just going online and finding a place. And we did these Arizona state flag patches. The big thing there was everybody at the time, this was 2012, everybody back then was making two color Arizona flag patches, which is bullshit because we have four colors on our flag, blue, red, yellow, and a stupid gold copper color, I guess, which is, looks like gold. So everybody just makes them three color or two color. So I was like, I'm going to make them in three color. And this is a bad example because I don't even know if I have them all anymore. Or no, I only had them in tan. That's right. Did them in tan. For some reason, I thought that would be a great idea. Let's just make them in tan. So I bought like zillions of them in tan. And guess what? You lose a bunch of money when you start out doing things and you don't know what you're doing. Later on, ended up making a 1.4C in PVC. We did the gun websites patch that has never been for sale. That was just for the teams. Then we've got uh the spam can patch the first one we did uh then we've got the gear websites patch that certain people have been given but can't really buy our logos eventually in 2014 we got with glock, uh, glock and a bunch of people and we created glocktober as an official thing so we asked glock if they were cool if we used glocktober they said yeah go ahead so they also gave us a hundred of a bunch of things. So we were able to put together a hundred prize packs. And I forget, we used to have the website. You can go find the website and it'll tell you all the details. But I think we found, I'm going to say 25 content creators back in the day in 2014, just as gun channels was starting to show up. And we said, hey, anybody that wants to give away Glock stuff, get on board and do something. So it was, a, it was an, a, an attempt to be a collaborative effort to bring people together to celebrate in the Glock and all the free stuff that Glock gave us. Uh, and then we collaborated on the patch and it's one of the worst patches 
that you'd ever seen. Do I have one sitting here? Yeah, I guess I technically have all of these right here. So this is the 2014 Glocktober patch. This is a collaboration from everybody in gun channels, and this is what we came up with. So you're welcome. Uh, but then I guess I don't have every patch in here because you just missed all those internet uh, press pass ones and stuff. So we did some other spam cans. Somewhere in this area region, we stopped going to middlemen and we started to talk to people individually at factories and stuff. And from this point on, it's been our our sources and the same place that we deal with all the time and we get good quality consistent we're super happy the rubber is good we don't see our stuff get resold with weird names and different colors and stuff and if you do see that let me know but i haven't seen that happening uh i've never heard a problem you know i'm knocking on wood over here never heard anybody say that the rubber fell apart or it faded it got weird or anything i mean maybe the velcro will fall off you know that's kind of wear and tear depending on how you're using it but for the most part, been super happy with them. Done lots of different designs. And at some point, a couple of years, maybe three or four years ago, it started saying so that people that might have a bunch of these things, maybe they want to keep track of them. So that's what this buyer's guide is all about. Let's you know when what you might have and when it came out. I didn't put in here. I'm thinking about doing a larger one of these one day where it'll tell you like there's only 100 of these, there's 50 of these or whatever, because I don't remember, but I'm sure I could do the research and figure it out, checking through old you know, projects and stuff. So then I separated out a few of them just because some of them get lost in the big mix here. And in a bigger buyer's guide, I think I would sort out like the guns and some other stuff, the Wolverines and that kind of thing. And this is the new one. So the new one includes the Daily Gun Show patch from 2022. So the earlier versions of this thing only went up to, you know, the last couple of patches. So everything kind of got shoved up and the new glow in the dark daily gun show patch, which is also sitting around here somewhere, uh, is on this list as well. But like I say, a bunch of this stuff gets lost. So we did a separate thing here for the spam cans. There's a bunch of people that just want to make sure they've got all of them or figure out what the thing is that they've got. They're not all available anymore, and that's why I figured I'd archive some of this. Same thing with every Second Matters patches. I can't keep track of them anymore. I haven't made them in every single color, but we've made them in some cool colors, hopefully, and this helps differentiate when. Stickers, I can't keep up with. I get our stickers made by, well, I don't know, places like this over here and other places. So uh, I just posted one picture here to let you know that, yeah, stickers are also pretty awesome. And we've done a bunch. We do have a vinyl machine. If ever I can figure out how to get some software, I'll make my vinyl machine work again. I can't even, I'm embarrassed how much vinyl I have because I used to do signs for gun shows and I don't do that anymore because I can't, I don't have any software for the cutter. Well, anyway, then we also did some gun art. We got some new art that'll be going up, but we did some things like patch panels. Uh, one time we made these little dog tags that had Morris code on them. Uh, we knew a guy our laser engraver so we did a couple of different projects uh that were you know laser engraved uh we also i'm a big fan of plastics so i've done some stuff with uh making collectibles and things for ammo uh in uh different sort of plastic type of things uh, we've also sewed up some holiday socks so if you're a big fan of holiday socks that have a tactical flair uh, that's another way that we attempt to make a couple of bucks at the holidays. Print-on-demand shirts are available and attempt to put up new designs all as often as possible over there. So this is just a sample of the spread shirt and the Teespring. We have two different sh shops, mainly because one goes to one YouTube channel and the other one goes to the other YouTube channel, honestly, just to see if they're any different. It also lets us test out both platforms. So if somebody comes along and says, you know what I'd like to do? Make a print-on-demand shirt. Well, we got our finger in both holes there so that we keep an eye on which one might be better for you or which if there's any differences at all. Some of the new stuff that's different in this buyer's guide to the other buyer's guides is we've added some of our consulting stuff, including making cartoons. That's sort of the, when I was talking about making cartoons, that's the picture we might have started with of our van next to the tank at this awesome museum. And then there's our van in front of that tank next to that in front of that museum. And because the picture didn't have one, we just added that flag to make it awesome. 
done some logos for people like Barbecue, who doesn't show up at this show, or Budget, who doesn't show up here, G23, who also doesn't show up here, or Daniel, who also doesn't show up here. But thanks to our friends for letting us, trusting us with doing their logos for them. We uh, use them as examples. We've done some other logos, but these are people you all know. We've also got a 3D printer, thanks to Daniel and uh, Luke. We've uh, been able to play around with some printing and made some different designs. Here's some examples of those, and some of those are available at the store as well. Well, I should say as well as doing the design itself. So if you have an idea and you just need it to exist in a 3D thing, I can help you out with that and then send it someplace and have it printed out in metal or whatever. Uh, more cartoon stuff and uh, guns and cars. So if you've got somebody who's interested in something like that, now that we've added the 3D stuff, I added a couple of the different 3D kind of images as well. And then some of the last pages here are going to talk about the uh, crowdfunding. So we offer crowdfunding consulting. Uh, we've done many, many, probably $100,000 worth of crowdfunding at this point over the years. It's not like one giant project. I'm not, you know, I haven't done a million dollar project, but I've definitely done $20,000 plus projects before in most of the major platforms. And the goal there is to experiment with them, to make money, ideally, to create projects that aren't necessarily, you know, the market isn't demanding them, but it'd be interesting to see them exist. But then also to be able to consult and to offer that insight to others so that they don't have to learn all this shit. Some of us can learn this stuff because it's easy for us to learn it. And we've had an opportunity to. So we're here to let the, that information go to the next, you know, those people that want to stand on our shoulders and jump. Uh, one of the ways that we attempted to do that, unfortunately, I learned some things not to do, uh, was the patch batches. So in 2019 and in 2020, um, we earned, or we raised a bunch of money so that we could give a bunch of patches to, what was this, 12 different organizations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 organizations. We gave each one of them 200 patches to do with as they please. We offered them the uh, ability to uh, get together and share their strategies and their successes so that they could each, you know, let everybody know what they were going to do with their patches and what how they did and if it was successful. That way, in the process, some of them might learn about each other or be friends, you know, meet up and do other projects together. Miserable failure. So what did I do? Doubled down on it and did it again. Brought different organizations in. Some of the people that were integral to the first one brought them back and still paying that off. But one day I'll learn. You can get those patch batches. Some people have them. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people made these possible. And the organizations are at no fault. They didn't know. You know, we're trying to start something out here. Unfortunately, the timing of the world and everything uh, did not allow those projects to keep going. But that was, uh, you know, something that we can offer. Hey, you can still uh, offer insight from the failures, right? And then, uh, you know, we do some social media stuff. So if you're interested in any kind of social media, uh, I don't really sell advertising, but if you're interested in some consulting, you'd like to know what it's like to have a, a project over on one of the socials that's either big or little. Uh, I've got both big and little projects over here. So that's the kind of stuff that we offer as consultants and as creatives and as educators, maybe. I don't know what the hell to call it, but that's a uh, run through of that little book. I might take this piece out and make it a separate video. So some of you all saw a video being filmed right there. We're right at one hour, so I'm going to, unless I need this for an example, I'm going to go back over to here, turn this camera off, because this happens to be right in front of my face this whole time. It's super annoying. And then uh, we'll go back, see what everybody's saying. Oh, there are people chatting. I do see Alan Anchor out there. Uh, let's see. POF is in Arizona. Yes, they are. Um, sorry, I should have mentioned that there might be some guns to be shown there. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure. Maybe. Let's see. I would have loved to have this booklet when I was getting my citizenship. I don't know. I mean, I appreciate that. I don't know if it would be useful in you know in an official sense. One thing I didn't do is annotate like all the footnotes and things along the way. But uh, if it would be useful, then I'd be happy to get one over to you. Uh, how can I get a few of them? They're over at our store. Uh, the gear website store. 
Uh, let's see. I like to get the playing cards. If you haven't, yeah, let me know. I can get you a couple. Oh, I definitely like to see those. Those are neat. We have done some challenge coins. Our challenge coins were made out of copper and blown away with a laser. So uh, we'll probably do some more challenge coins in the future. I'm not sure if they'll be with a laser, but uh, I guess we've done some plastic ones out of 3D printing since then. That's when Alan Anchor showed up. Those AZ flags came out nice. Yeah, they were they were well made, I guess. I don't like the... I mean, I learned lessons, right? But uh, let's see. The village cat was called Patches. Nice. And, oh, said Alan Aker saying I have the California patch panel. I, I For a while there, I had a machine that let me put an edge on carpet. So I would cut carpet out and make patch panels out of it and then edge the carp, edge the material so that it looked kind of nicer than just having cut out. And that machine busted. Busted on Texas one time on that, like, angle part of Texas. It's one of the reasons I don't like panhandles because they cost me 200 bucks. And not being able to make patch panels anymore. But, uh, well, I will eventually have patch panels up there. This guy's always asking about them. Uh, what's your favorite platform that you have used? Oh, snap. What was I talking about? Which platform? I don't know which one you mean. Are you mean for raising funds? They're both useful for different things. Um, I'm assuming, because I think the only platforms I was talking about were... Uh, crowdfunding and if that's the case um one of them is like uh for boats and one of them is like for vehicles for trucks and cars so it's they're they're both useful but they are different and i would consider them if you're only doing something really need a boat then go with the boat one right but if you might need to do but one or the other then you're going to want to learn both most of the time you can do stuff on one or the other but there are certain things you want to do on one, and there are certain things you want to do on the other. That's really the way to say it. Everybody's saying hey to each other. Did anything mention about the Velcro-backed booklet holder? Super limited. Yeah, no, that one I tried to make when I uh, still could embroider. But I can't embroider anymore, so I quit making them. But I did do a limited run of Buyer's Guide pockets that uh, actually... Two people have, I think. Maybe three, four people have, but I think only two people have. Uh, 3D print. Yep, we have done some 3D print stuff. All right. Well, again, thanks, everybody, for showing up. This turned out to be just kind of a pause in the pace of looking at uh, specifically one state each month or each week, I guess. I do have a poll going over on the... Um, oh, I could have gone right there. On the Daily Gun Show channel. Yawn and all over the place. On the Daily Gun Show channel, we do usually have a poll going to decide which activist to talk about. But uh, I have to, I think I skipped a week or something. Or it's something's wrong with something's broken on my scheduling here. So we got one that came up after the show last week. And it looks like Robin Sandoval is one. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, each week we attempt to talk about one second amendment activists on tuesdays and on the daily gun show youtube channel they can let us run a poll over there so i've been posting or using that as an excuse to put links to all the different youtube channels for the activists that you get to vote on so even though we're going to be talking about robin i'm going to also mention the other people that we had that everyone had to vote on this week are just completely random. I can't remember how I did it. I just opened up the page and just took random names. Uh, Holly Sullivan from the CCD, all this, the Connecticut Citizens Defense League. Philip Smith from the National African American Gun Association, NAGA. And then uh, Derek LeBlanc from Kids Safe, which is uh, Oregon. Uh, NAGA is in Georgia. And guess what? Connecticut Citizens Defense League is in Massachusetts, I mean, Connecticut. Robin is a girl in a gun and other things, and she is, we're going to talk about her. And then Teresa Inneker is in New Jersey. She's a lawyer, and she's the Coalition of New Jersey Firearms Owners. Everybody, all the girls that we talk about are typically also in DC Project, 
you know, just because that's uh, a big project that incorporates a lot of the active activists. All right, so Robin Sandoval. Uh, if we go over to Girl in a Gun, they only have 819 subscribers. So if you're interested in uh, subscribing to a decent channel, wow, they don't have much going on over there. So that's one of the reasons they probably don't have that many subscribers. But uh, that's a, uh, a worthy channel to subscribe to. It looks like most of their videos were um, interviews with their instructors. So a girl in a gun is, well, we're going to go find out, actually. So we're going to type a girl in a gun into the thing. And since Robin created a girl in a gun, it'll probably have an about page that we can use to uh, chat about her. So there's a bunch of more links to a girl in a gun. And now we're going to go to that about the leadership page. How about that? All right, I keep calling Robin Sandoval the executive director because I know her more because she's on more shows and stuff, but Juliana Crowder is actually the one that founded it, and I'll eventually remember that again, right? So then I guess I am going to the about, or I'm going to the leadership team page. Okay, there we go. So Robin Sandoval is a converted anti-gunner who shares her journey from gun control to gun rights, Robin is the executive director of Girl in a Guns Women Shooting League and manages the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. She's, she is a certified pistol instructor, a range master with, or, or certified pistol instructor with range master, which is legit, USCCA and NRA, range safety officer, and has trained, and she's also a range safety officer and has trained under many notable instructors, which means she's got certificates with other instructors learning their different techniques and uh, perspectives on the sport or the art. Um, she's a recreational and competitive shooter in several sports and disciplines. She serves on the board of directors and advisory board of the DC project and regularly meets with members of Congress. She famously says, moms who make demands to take our rights don't speak for moms like me. Robin is the managing editor for Women and Guns magazine and a frequent speaker at national conferences and podcasts on gun-related issues. She was on the cover of Time magazine in November of 2018, and her profile is displayed at the Buffalo Bill Center of the, whatever, that horrible museum in Wyoming, for her advocacy work. She was honored with the 19, 2019 Defender of Liberty Award by the Second Amendment Foundation, and Robin holds a Bachelor of Arts, whatever that means, from St. Edwards University, wherever that is. So she's a brain nerd, and she's a mom, and she goes around doing stuff, right? All kinds of stuff. So uh, I think that's a pretty decent summary. Now I'm going to just shove Robin into the search engines and see what else they give us. Um, oh, look it. She's in Imdaba. Nice. Robin Sandoval is known for... His work on Meet the Pressers, so we have to change that maybe. But in 2019, for being on Meet the Pressers, she was in uh, in the IMDb. That's kind of neat. With Tony Simon and Nikki Gosher. That's cool. Does Tony know he's in IMDb? I wonder if Tony knows that. Talk show host. Interesting. There's a picture of him. Nice. So we're going to make that a post over on YouTube later so that uh, we figure that out, even though we were looking for Robin. Uh, let's see. So we've got that Imdaba. We've got an About Me. What is that? Some kind of a place. I guess it's some kind of a social platform. So it basically says the same thing as over there, except that it's got some links and stuff. Interesting. So this must be some sort of an introductory page that people uh, put up. Or maybe it was put up for her. That's a scab sometimes. People put something up with all your info on it and then have it a little bit wrong and or maybe not accurate or up-to-date or something. And then when you go, hey, make that right or accurate or up-to-date, they go, yeah, give me money. 
and then that's the the sucker bet. So I don't know if that's the deal there or not. Maybe she created it. So now we've got Women in Guns, which is that magazine that she's the editor of. Yep, Robin is the executive director of Girl in a Gun Women Shooting League. She's a certified pistol instructor, and that's all it says. So um, Women in Guns is a magazine, I believe. Maybe it is just the website. I don't see anything here about ordering it or you got advertised, submitted an article in shop. So I guess maybe they don't have a publication. It's just the online art, uh, magazine. Uh, then you've got Robin's uh, link on Gun Freedom Radio, which is what I'm going to link to in the description of the uh, video and in the uh, links here because... Um, Gun Freedom Radio always does a really good job of including a lot of information about the person that they interview. So it has that same sort of information with a little bit more um, about her. And then offers at least a dozen links down here, or yeah, 10 links down here uh, that are going to be to other projects of Robbins or maybe some of the girl in the gun stuff. All right on. So that was our Second Amendment Advocate of the Day. We will feature another Second Amendment Advocate next uh, sat next Tuesday. And stay tuned to the YouTube channel for the poll. I try to pop those things up a day or two before the show so that people have a chance to vote. This week we had uh, six votes. So it wasn't a ton of people that participated. It looks like with six votes... Four went to Robin, and one went to Phil Smith, and one went to Derek. So, you know, you could have been the uh, the the chain the determining factor over there until we get sixty or seventy votes. You can be the one to determine who we're going to talk about next week. All right. So our goal is to create awareness of what our Second Amendment protects on the second day of each month. Well, with every second matters, I guess I'm used to saying that. Our goal is to create awareness of what our Second Amendment protects on the two to a Tuesday also. And today, like I say, our uh, what I tried to do is just go through, chat about some of the stuff that we've done on this show on Tuesdays, specifically on this uh, two a Tuesday playlist, and then uh, going through the fifty states of two a book and motivations behind it kind of a little bit of behind the scenes about it and then a little bit of extra with the uh gear websites buyer's guide so again thanks everybody for showing up live and the people that participated cancer mouse has been out here uh participating in the whole chat appreciate it it's nice to have people up at night so glad to be here for the people who are awake at night uh either doing stuff getting stuff done or maybe just not being able to sleep either way Thanks for the uh, participation. Of course, thanks to Alan Anchor for being part of the show. Got a whole bunch of stuff going on you know, with Alan Anchor here in the future going forward. Uh, and then I got other people, Woods out there. And well, like I guess that's it. Everybody else probably hanging out over by barbecues. But uh, we'll be, or no, that's Kitty. Sorry about that. And I guess Smoke. Smoke might be around still. It's hard to say without people saying stuff. There's no way to know who's out there. So it's time to say hey to the people that did say hey, and then uh, we will be back tomorrow with the uh, tactical quiz. So is tomorrow's tactical quiz? The, oh, no, tomorrow's tactical quiz is just, oh, snap. I can't let it out of the bag. Tomorrow's tactical quiz will be, like all the tactical quizzes, different than the other tactical quizzes. Uh, we chose when we decided to do our gun game shows every single week. Unlike a lot of the other shows that do the same gun game show every single week, we do a different gun game show every single week so that it keeps it spicy and interesting. So stay tuned for that. Barbecue will be live in the morning. Uh, Cape Gunworks will probably be live in the morning, I think. And Chris from 740 does a show in the evenings right before this one. Uh, if I'm missing somebody, check it out over on gunchannels.com. We have a list on the, uh, there's a thing at the top that you can click on and see a list of all the different live shows. And I guess I'm done saying stuff. We'll be back to pick you up later.
click on the right buttons over here. Tonight's episode, The Ripoff. Hey, did you know that you could help support our future projects and let everyone know you're a fan of what we do? Check out our print-on-demand store. We have a tab here on YouTube. When you click on it, you can choose from a bunch of different items. We have shirts and posters and coffee mugs. Click on the one you like. When you find the design you want to put on it, choose a color and a size if it's appropriate. And when you purchase these items, a portion goes to help fund our future projects. We really do appreciate your support. You get some cool stuff. When you get that stuff, post pictures here and on other platforms, and we'll hook you up next time you order from our gear website store. Thank you for your support of gunwebsites.com. There's a little bonus footage for people that stuck around till the very end. <laughs>